What's up everyone? So as usual, around this time of the month, I'll do my roundup of the coming month's issue of MASS. So MASS stands for Monthly Applications in Strength Sport. So out of the whole issue, which referenced over 50 peer-reviewed articles, uh, I'm just gonna be doing a deep dive on one piece, which covered a paper published this year, looking at the difference between so-called grouped supersets and separated supersets. And just so we're clear on the terminology, Group supersets refers to doing exercises back to back without rest that train the same muscle. So for example, doing two exercises for the chest right after one another um, would be an example of a group superset. And then an example of a separated superset would be say doing one set of bench press and then doing a set of leg extensions right after it without rest. And the basic idea behind both methods is that you're able to save on time by cutting out some of the rest periods between the exercises. Uh, the group superset method is also touted often by bodybuilders as being a sort of intensity technique. And the theory goes that you can activate more musculature by doing two exercises for the same body part back to back. So in this study, the authors looked at the effects of both different types of supersets on two different things. So muscle activation, and then indirect markers of muscle damage, such as creatine kinase levels and muscle soreness. And the subjects were 20 sort of trained men, as uh, so they were familiar with weight training, uh, but not competitively themselves. So all the subjects performed a single training session, and those in the grouped superset group uh, did five sets of leg press and leg extensions back to back of around 10 reps to failure with no rest between any sets. Then they rested for three minutes and did the same basic thing again. So five consecutive sets with no rest between sets for the bench press and pec deck. The separated superset group had the same basic setup, except they supersetted five sets of the bench press with five sets of leg extensions. They rested for three minutes and then did the same thing again for the leg press and pec deck. And you can pause the screen right here if you wanna look at their actual training protocol so you can wrap your head around the study design. So the main differences had to do with recovery. Creatine kinase levels, which as I said is a marker of muscle damage, remained elevated for the grouped superset group uh, at all time points up to five days and may have remained elevated for even longer than that. Group supersets were also associated with higher levels of DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness. Um, however, it didn't reach statistical significance. There were also some differences in EMG activation where on the final few reps of the fifth set of leg extensions, there was more muscle activation in the rectus femoris muscle of the quad with group supersets. But the increase was fairly small and the rectus femoris muscle of the quad is just a supporting muscle anyway where the vastus medialis, intermedius, and lateralis would be considered the prime movers for knee extension. And so it's not clear whether or not this would translate into meaningful hypertrophy for the quad musculature overall. And the same thing goes for the chest exercises. Uh, the anterior delts were more active at some time points with group supersets, indicating that perhaps the pecs were fatigued from the bench pressing, causing the front delts to take over a bit. But this is kind of a moot point anyway, since most people want to activate their pecs more when doing the pec deck exercise, not their front delts. And supersetting bench press with the pec deck isn't shown in this study to be an effective way to increase activation of the pecs themselves. So here are a few practical takeaways that I took away from this piece. First, if you're going to be doing supersets, it should be because you're limited on time. Otherwise, resting three to five minutes between sets to optimize hypertrophy, according to the most recent data on the topic. If you are limited on time and you do think that supersetting would be a viable strategy to help you get more work in in a shorter amount of time, then you should probably use separated supersets since it won't affect the quality of your work, the quality of your training, and it won't impede your recovery as much or for as long. Um, so if you're perhaps on a higher frequency program, uh, doing those group supersets might impede your recovery to the point that it'll decrease your performance in later workouts in the week. However, I think group supersets can have their place in one's training program, especially anyone following a lower frequency program, since that sort of decrease in recovery for up to five days may not matter as much if you're resting a long time between bouts of training the same muscle group anyway. And Greg also mentions some potential merit of occasionally shocking the muscle or running a shock mesocycle or microcycle. So if you really just want to sort of blast a certain muscle group, then doing group supersets is shown to create more muscle damage and be an effective way to potentially do that. But perhaps an even more optimal way to sort of structure your rest periods would be to sort of stagger them in a way where say you were doing leg press and you had three minutes of rest between each set of leg press, uh, instead of supersetting, say, I don't know, tricep extensions right after you finish your set of leg press, you should wait a minute, then do your set of tricep extensions, then rest another minute, and then go back to your leg press again. So the total rest time between leg press sets 
would still be the same, but you'd have about one minute of rest to allow for like global recovery so that your tricep work wasn't impeded as a result of doing the leg press work right before it, if that makes sense. Um, that method is covered in more detail in the issue itself, uh, but I'm gonna leave it at that for this one. So Mass is running a sale today and tomorrow, so August 1st and 2nd. Uh, so if you'd like to gain access to all of the old issues and this current issue, then you can do so by subscribing at the link in the description box. Um, I've also linked my, what month am I on? August? No, July. I've also linked my July Spotify playlist in the description. So if you're looking for some new training music, uh, you can check that out. And finally, I'm gonna be going to Vancouver tomorrow with Stephanie. We're going there to watch uh, Kendrick and Travis Scott and Dram uh, on the Woo! damn tour. So uh, I'm gonna probably vlog that a little bit. Uh, so maybe I'll do a week's break from the science-based content. And then after that, we'll be right back on schedule with a genetics science explained video. So you can stay tuned for that. Um, if you guys like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I will see you guys in a couple of days.